Hey guys, what is up? Welcome to my channel. For today's video, I'm going to be doing an overview of the brand new Vizier Grande Pro 1X palette. So if you want to see my thoughts on it, then just keep watching. Hi guys, if you're new here, my name is Morgan. I am a product knowledge enthusiast. I just love knowing anything and everything about all of the new makeup on the market and sharing my thoughts with you guys. Now, today's review is gonna be a little bit different than the typical style reviews that I normally do. It's gonna be more so of an overview. I'm gonna be talking about the Grande Pro 1X palette that just came out from Busy Art. Now, if you didn't know, it is a reimagined version of the original Grande Pro Volume 1 palette, which came out, I wanna say, three years ago I got it for my birthday as you can see I have used and abused the old one that I had and this palette was a limited edition palette and they did eventually end up discontinuing it so they came out with this new version right on time as our older ones were hitting their expiration date so it's perfect it's a revamped version but there are some updates here there are some similarities as well so I didn't as much go into the quality of my review here I more so swatched the shades so you can see what you're getting into because because I can tell you now the quality of this is very good. It's well aligned with all of the other ones, especially this old one as well. It's the same. You're going to love the quality. If you know you love the quality, this is just the same. Just so you are aware, this is a limited edition palette once again. Now, the original palette was around for a while, but it did eventually get discontinued. So I imagine the same thing is gonna happen with this. I was really excited to pick this one up because mine had seen better days. And if you don't know, I don't do it so much anymore because of the circumstances of the world. But for a while, a couple of years, I was really into doing bridal makeup. And this was my go-to most used palettes. And I've been looking to update this. So the new one came right on time. Now, I don't know that I'm gonna continue doing bridal makeup makeup in 2021 just still questionable about COVID and all of that but it is my plan to eventually once Jose and I relocate to open up my own bridal beauty business and this just like my old one is going to be my go-to palette so this guy is $150 it is a huge investment however their original 12 pan palettes are around $80 so it's a really great deal to get 35 shades for a hundred and fifty if you love the formula. One thing that's very important to know about Viseart is especially with these types of palettes, it's really made for a makeup artist. Now of course it's not limited to just makeup artists. There is no gatekeeping here, but you can just see within the design and the color choices finishes it's all made with a makeup artist in mind i picked this up from muse beauty pro it's also available at beautylish and the Vizzy art website i always recommend muse beauty pro that's where i pick up all of my Vizzy art palettes from paid for it myself I had to have it so let's take a deep dive if you didn't know how these look so Downside of this packaging is I've only used this once and you can already see it's starting to get a little bit dirty, but that's okay. It has a ribbon to open up the actual palette itself. You have a mirror here and this is awesome because you can set it up many different ways as you're working. You can also have it completely flat like this. You can also use the top of the flap and have it open up like this and you can also pull this plastic film off. I like to keep mine on and this is normally how I have mine open when I am doing my work. And you get 35 shades in this palette. When I get into my close-up demo, I will go over the sizing of this, but the pan sizes are different. The pan size in this is 1.5 gram pans, whereas the old one is two gram pans. So this has 25% bigger pans, and I will do a side-by-side -side comparison in my close-up of the two comparing them. I personally like the smaller pans with more colors. So on the Busy Art website, they have a great diagram of each of the shades comparing it to the original and you'll see exactly what was taken out, what was added in, and what are the same. So I'm going to put it on the screen, but I'm also going to put a link down below for you to take a closer deep dive into it. For the most part, the colors are the same with a few additions here and there, but it's pretty hard to tell the difference between the two. 
So my suggestion, if you do have this palette and if you were wondering if you needed to get the new one and own both, you definitely don't need to own both. The only way I would recommend you to add the new one to the collection is if this one is done for. Like mine is old, mine is past its expiration. I needed a fresh one in my kit, that's why I purchased this one. But the shades are the same, you know, so... It's more of just an update as opposed to an addition. Now, like I said, the original one is actually going to have 30 shades, whereas the new one has 35. Because of those smaller pan sizes, there is more room for colors. Now, here's what it says on the website. So they have 11 new shades in the new one, and they are base tones and mid-tones. So these two last rows where it's about the depth are actually pretty much the same, I believe. If they say the new shades are inspired by our cult classic shades from our archives and highly requested tones from other makeup artists limited edition and limited supply. The website just has a lot of valuable information if you were looking more so about the differences between the two and all of that. So like I said, today's video is different from a traditional review just because I already approve of the quality and I don't think this is a palette for everybody. It's not made for the everyday consumer. That being said, if you still want it, by all means go for it. It's an awesome palette to have. I absolutely love owning it and my old one I'm going to keep in my own personal collection. It's $150 and I really would only strongly recommend it to makeup artists, specifically in bridal. I just, this is the perfect bridal palette. But anyways, I'm gonna get into the close-ups of these two. We're gonna do some live swatching together and then I will finish off with a tutorial of how I did this look because I did use just this palette today for the eye look that I'm wearing. So let's get into it. I wanted to take some time to show you the difference between the original Grande Pro Volume 1 and the Grande Pro 1X. Just so you could see if you did have this one previously from a couple years ago. You can see which one has been worn and torn and been used. This one has more of a black color. Now I don't know if that's different because of age, but you can see the folds line up differently and the name is different. If you flip on the back, they are the same. One is dingier than the other, and I apologize if things are a bit <laughs> crooked. I've never filmed like this before, and I can see they're crooked. Oh well. Anyways, I just want you to get the idea of color, size, all of that. So I'm going to start off by opening up the Pro 1, the original. You have the original. This is what it looks like. It has 6, 12, 18, 24, 32 shades. ranging from light to deep. Now let's open up the Grande Pro 1X. You open it up. She's clean. I've only used her for one look. And you can immediately see we do have some more colors. There are now seven per row instead of six, but there are still columns of five. So you do have an additional row here of extra shades. So there are 35 shades in this palette. So here they are side by side, and you can see it has the general same rundown of shades. You'll see probably the deepest columns over here are the same exact colors. Where you're going to find the differences are the additional colors over in these rows. On the Visi Art website, they do specify what are new colors, what are added, what are taken away. So that's a really good visual for you to see. But I did want you to see them side by side and the differences. Generally speaking, if you're looking for repetition, if you have the volume one, I don't think you need the volume two because they are essentially the same with some added shades. Now let's take a comparison with the size here. So you can see there is a difference in pan size, which I personally don't mind. This is the original. This one is new one. As you can see, even though I used the original one regularly, I actually didn't even end up hitting pan on any shades. So for me, I like the smaller shades with more color options. So if you have a lot of shadows in your collection and you appreciate smaller size, I really am happy about that with the Pro. A big thing with Busy Art palettes, of course, is that the colors are interchangeable. So the colors that you can now interchange with this new size are the Eton Dew line. So the Eton Dew has the, I believe it's called the Mink Set, the Violet, and they just came out with the Paris Love Letter. So this is Busy Art's newest size that came out in the last few months. So the new Pro X 
is interchangeable with the new sizes. Since I already know that I love the quality of these shadows and I really can't give you much in the way of tutorials, they're just so much colors, they are all flat shadows, they're more so made to mix and match with other palettes. I'm gonna just swatch row by row so if you were interested in purchasing this you can at least see what you're getting yourself into and money's worth, texture, quality, all of that. Now what I love about this palette is the layout of depths and where the colors are. It makes it very easy to reach for the colors that you want because it's organized by not only color family but also depth and kind of where you would place the color. So obviously you have your highlight shades over here going all the way to the depth shades and you'll see you'll have the warmer more neutral shades, more plum shades, more purple, more cooler gray tones going this way. So it's organized by depth going this way, and it's organized by tone going up this way. And then within each of these, it's also organized by color family. So it's just a way that makes sense. And as a makeup artist, I can really appreciate that. So I think the way that I'm going to swatch today is by Rose. I do want to make a disclaimer with my swatch swatches is that I don't dig too deeply into the pan itself because I feel like if you lightly swatch with your fingers it is easier to see how a shadow would perform and the true opacity of the shade. So this shade was a little bit looser in formula but as you can see it's applying beautifully. And just like that, those are all of the swatches of the new palette. Now, if you aren't familiar with Busy Arts Formula, it does have a drier consistency to them, and that's normal. The shadows still work great, but it's very trendy to have very creamy, opaque, matte shades, but Busy Art doesn't follow that trend. Their typical formula is a little bit more dry. I noticed with the lighter shades, and this one in particular, the shadows were a little bit more loosely packed and they kind of got everywhere, but it was only with probably this shade and the white shade and this shade and this shade like just the lighter tones where it was a little bit more powdery but for the most part this is consistent with Vizzy Art's regular quality especially comparing it to the original Grande Pro 1 which I've become very familiar with it feels exactly the same especially the shades that are the same as the original one everything felt consistent across the board so I can truly say from experience that the shadows are very easy to work with though they might be different from the traditional Traditional makeup formulas that we are getting in today's market. It's a great artistry formula and while you know I I'm kind of promoting this more so as an artistry palette. If you're looking for a great essential palette that's going to have all of the base colors that you need to cover for everyday neutral makeup, you have this here. This will be your right hand man. And not only that, it is more portable than you think because you can always take these out and pop them into a magnetic palette or you can even pop them into one of their Itandu palettes as well. So while I couldn't give you a traditional style review with this palette, I did want to show you what you were getting and confirm that these are still really great quality palettes and these are all of the shades that you are going to get. So we are going with this smoky matte kind of look. I have Urban Decay Primer Potion down as my base. 
Starting off with an Esom V34, we're going to take this warm medium brown. I'm going to pat it down. You can see you get a lot of color and work it out. So I know this look isn't the most exciting because it is an all matte palette, but I just want to show you how well the colors blend and build together. And there's something to be said about a matte look. Matte looks aren't appreciated, but obviously for me, when I use this palette, it's just a building piece and I'll go in with another palette to give me a nice shimmer on the lid. Wing Goss number six. I'm going to put this along the lower lash line, but an all matte look, it's still really pretty. I'm gonna still use that Wing Goss brush and we're gonna go into a, this medium brown. It has more of a neutral undertone. So the warmth is just coming from behind. You wanna build it out here, kind of wing it out just a little bit and then bring it in, but leave the lid space open. And you can see how easily these colors are working out. Again, build it on the lower lash line. Taking a refer number 12 brush, we're going into this deep kind of Swiss chocolate kind of shade. It has a little bit of warmth to it. Very, very pigmented. This is where you have to start being careful. So I'm going to place this close to the lash line and then build that color right out here. The outer corner, kind of almost winging it out. Work very slowly. Taking a little bit more, we're gonna run the entire lower lash line with this color to create that deep smoky eye. I'm gonna take a fluffier brush. This is a Esom S35 and work it along the lash line and blend the edges out. I'm gonna take a little bit more inward so that we have a deeper shadow above the lighter shade. Finally, I'm gonna take an Esom V27 into this light tan cream shade. Now this shade has more fallout than the mattes. And you can see how pigmented that is. So we're gonna put this all over the lid and work on blending that. And this is just gonna brighten everything open up the eyes. You see how it just blends in beautifully with those deeper colors. Might need to rebuild some of the outer edge colors. Okay, and this is the look. I'm going to put on liner and lashes now. All right, you guys, that is all I have for today's video. I know it was a bit weird, but I just wasn't sure of the best way to show this palette because there are so many shades, and to be quite frank, it's not about the looks that you can create because this is not a palette that you really want to create full looks with very often. It's a palette for me that I use to be the base of the type of looks that I do, and then I'll dig into other palettes. It really is truly an artist's palette palette but I absolutely love it and you know what if you're into matte looks and you only do matte looks you don't like shimmer I will say this is probably a really great palette to have but yeah but anyway shape or form I do hope that this video was helpful to you I just wanted you to know what you were getting yourself into when purchasing it so if you aren't subscribed to my channel yet I would love it if you would consider taking the time to do so and I will see you all in the next one bye guys have a good one